Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Nipper, author of The Peculiar Miracles of Antoinette Martin, and today I have another spinning video for you. Today I'm going to show you how to spin a really nice textured yarn from uh, by lock spinning, and then in a separate video I'm going to show you how to ply that yarn. Let me show you what I've done so far. Here it is. Hope you can see that. You see that this is a Cotswold mix fleece and I purchased it at one of our local um, fiber festivals, the Kentucky Wool Festival, and I've just been spinning it up. This is what it looks like on the wheel and here, if you can see, is my bag full of remaining fiber. I bought about two pounds of it. So what my plan is to spin this up and um, then I'm going to ply it with a nice um, commercially prepared mohair and hopefully it'll keep all of that nice texture involved there. One thing I will say about spinning with this fleece, this is Cotswold. It is absolutely not next to the skin soft. My plan for this is to use it as an accent on a nice, um, maybe a nice wrap or a nice poncho or, or shawl but this is not something that I would want to wear next to my skin. It's not horribly itchy, but it's just definitely not soft. Um, it's not like a merino or definitely not like an alpaca, nothing like that. So anyway, I will get to spinning and show you what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm set up now with my wheel, my Spinolution Echo, um, and I have the locks that I will be ready to spin. Um, as you can see, these are not combed, they're not carded or prepared in any way. I'm just going to spin them from this big mass that I'm holding. Now you will come across, if you're spinning this way, you will come across some vegetable matter in your fleece like this. Right here is a little piece of hay or straw. What you want to do is you want to pick that out as you're working. This has not been prepared by a fiber mill or anything like that. And sheep are, as we know, outside animals. They're going to get messy, so you're gonna to have to do a little bit of work unless you've bought from someone else who has already gone through and picked out all of the vegetable matter. But um, even then, you're likely to find little pieces of straw, grass, anything like that in there. So. That'll come out as you're spinning. But what I'm gonna do is I just, I grab a handful of locks from my bag and I just hold it on my lap like this. I don't do any preparation other than picking out a few obvious pieces of vegetable matter. And what I do is I will, let me show you this a little better. I will pick up the section that I want to start spinning. And I don't really have, other than the fact that this is a variegated fleece, you see it's got some white, some grays, different shades of gray. I was spinning a white section, so I will probably start this with an off-white that goes into gray. That's my only thought process behind picking where I start. And what I do is I, I just sort of tease out, not the lock end, I like to keep that intact, but the cut end, okay, the shorn end of the fleece. And I'll tease it out a little bit to make it join easier. A little bit of vegetable matter here that I'm picking out, okay. And what I do is it's just like you would regularly join if you were spinning a worsted or a woolen weight. Um, well, let me take that back. I do often with this, I will split the fleece that I was working with or the lock that I was working with and I will put this new fuzzy piece against the fuzziness of the other yarn that I've already spun. I'm going to spin clockwise because I always start my singles clockwise and then I let the join happen there. and. I want this to be a nice, um, a nice thick yarn, so I'm not really compressing the air as I spin. I am adjusting the tension because I want it to go quickly 
onto the wheel. And I've got a full bobbin here, so it's winding it on. But I, I've got a nice amount of tension right now. I do not want this yarn to kink up. See, I'm letting it go through, creating this. I'm not smoothing it out. I'm pulling it back and then I let the twist jump in there. I'm going to spin for a little bit and then I want to show you two different techniques that you can do with the locks. And I'll try to get up close for that. I should have done this from the start so that I didn't have such a full bobbin, y'all. Sorry about that. Basically, when you're lock spinning, you just want to let the fleece do what it wants to do so that you can keep the integrity and the texture of the locks. Okay. So you see, I'm just pulling back a little bit, taking out the vegetable matter. This can be a very um, start and stop type of process. That's where I'm at right now. But you could, you could continue spinning this way, just sort of letting the fleece do what it wants to do. Don't compress it. Don't squeeze. When you see me pinching here, it's because I don't want the twist to go back until I'm ready. But then, you see this lock right here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this one in front of my thumb, let it turn around that way, let a little bit of twist build up, and then jump back. And you see, I have that nice element there. And here I'm just loosely going through. This is a thicker section. And here I've got another lock I'm keeping out. I'm keeping it in front of my thumb. What I found is, depending on the direction that the locks are facing, it, that is what decides whether they're going to show more in your finished yarn or not. See this one again in front of my thumb toward the wheel, pinching behind it. And, oops, a little vegetable matter got through. If you wonder why art yarns are more expensive, when it looks like, if to the untrained eye, this can look like I'm just letting anything happen, but really it's a very controlled chaos. You want to create a yarn that will hold together while letting the fiber keep its own integrity and its own um, structure its own beautiful attributes. If you look, you can see the, the yarn on the bobbin right now. You see it's nice and kind of wild and curly. Well, so is it, it reflects the locks that I'm holding on my lap. And for me, that's my goal when I'm spinning art yarn. I want the yarn that I create to reflect the, the animal it came from. So with this one, I looked at all the color, I looked at all of these wonderful wild locks and I thought, okay, I don't want to suppress that or repress it in any way. Instead, I want to spin in a way that's going to really um, showcase that beauty. And for me, that meant lock spinning. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a little bit of the white and see it's going in nicely. I'm drafting a little bit because if you don't draft at all, you're gonna have just a big clumpy mess. So I'm drafting a little bit of the areas that are behind, behind the locks that I want to keep. And then, see, look at that. That's a nice, let me, let me come in a little bit and show you all. Okay, see, this is a nice area right here where I've just kind of let the locks spin through and you'll see that the twist is really gathered here it's kind of like spinning thick and thin it's really gathered here then it's thicker here it jumps over that lock and now it'll be thinner again here now with this one remember I let the locks go in front of my thumb and I'm going to show you what happens next if you let the locks if you keep the locks going in back of your thumb kind of holding them down in fact, this is a good section to show you the difference. Okay, so here, 
this nice big chunky spot that we looked at before, that is spinning while keeping the pointy part of the locks in front of my thumb, closer to the wheel. Then, back here, we've still got a lot of nice texture, but what I did is I kept the locks point with the end pointing toward me, not toward the wheel. So behind my thumb, closer to my body, pointing toward me. And what I like to do when I'm spinning a lock yarn like this is I alternate. Sometimes I will push the locks pointing toward my wheel. Sometimes I'll pull them back so I have a, a smoother section like this and hold them toward my body. And basically, that's it. You're really just, see, now I'm, I'm letting them go through again. Letting the locks go in front. Doing another join here. So really it's all about getting the best. For me, spinning textured or art yarn, it's about getting the best out of this particular fleece. And when I looked at this fleece, it, it kind of, to me, said that it wanted to be part of just this controlled chaos, showing these locks everywhere. I see this as ending up in a beautiful gray and white shawl as some lovely accent pieces. And I think it would be a really nice rustic looking yarn. So for me, that's about all there is to lock spinning. It's really, the difference is which direction you want your locks facing. Okay, remember, they're going to stick out more if the tail end, the part away from the sheep's body, so right here, this part, if it is facing toward the wheel, then you're going to have more of that curly cue on your lock. If you smooth it back like this, and the tail end here is facing your body, you're going to have a slightly smoother yarn. It's not gonna be smooth, it's not going to be worsted. Um, and, and that's not what I want when I'm lock spinning anyway. But um, that is the difference between the two. Now you see I kept this one in front of my thumb and then I slowly spun and allowed that, allowed this texture to form. So, um, so that's it as far as lock spinning. It's pretty easy. You will get more used to it the more you do. See, I just separated these two, these two locks, okay? And I'm going to spin. The twist is going to accumulate in the back of the locks. While I'm spinning and working, I'm going to hold these two in front of my thumb. So let me do that real quick and show you that. So see, I'm pinching back here behind the locks. And I might, as I'm spinning, I might gently guide them in the direction I want them to go. But you see, I'm not letting twist go back into the yarn. Gently guiding them around this way. But see, now I've got those really cute locks hanging out of my yarn, which is what I want this yarn to be. I don't want a smooth yarn. I spoke in one of my other videos about the beauty and imperfections. And a lot of people might see textured yarn or art yarn as an imperfect yarn, but really you can't just sit down and let anything go into your wheel. You have to be deliberate and intentional about the choices you are making, even when you are spinning in this way so that it's not perfectly neat you're still in control of the art that you're making. You are still in control of the, the yarn. Um, the yarn's not getting away from you and just doing whatever it wants to do. In a way, you are, you are facilitating that. You are allowing the yarn to, sort of, it's gonna sound funny, but sort of be its best self. Um, you're guiding that. Now see, I'm fishing out as I'm working. 
I'm sort of making a split here. I saw a tail here that I wanted to, a curl that I wanted to come out, so I just sort of split it and pushed it out. And your hands will start doing this as you work, as you do more and more lock spinning. Um, but what you're doing is you're just, you're allowing the natural beauty of the fleece to really come out. And I think for me, that's the best way to really honor the animal that it came from. Um, and to just enjoy the beauty and the variety that God has created here on the earth. So anyway, um, if you have any questions about lock spinning, I will show you when I ply this yarn. Now, a lot of times people don't ply the yarn, and you wouldn't have to. I mean, it, you, would, you would have a little bit more energy, you see, in your yarn than you would want in a singles. But it, it holds together, see? I'm, I mean, I'm, you can see I'm yanking on it. It holds together. You don't need to ply it to keep it together. Um, what I'm doing when I'm plying it is just adding another element to it. And I am wanting it a little bit uh, more balanced. So that's why I'm plying this particular yarn. But you wouldn't have to. It's not something that's necessary. You can leave this as a singles and it will be fine. Just you'd have to be aware of the extra energy in the yarn while you are knitting or crocheting or whatever you're wanting to make with it. So anyway, that's it for lock spinning. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see things that you're making. If you end up doing some lock spinning after watching this video, I'd love to see a picture. Um, post a picture in the comments or tell me how your spinning is going so that we can maybe share some some tips and tricks back and forth. I'm Stephanie Nipper. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe, and I will have another video coming soon. Enjoy all of the imperfections in your own art. Bye-bye.